Hey everyone, Uncle Jess here. This is the Voxel Lab Polaris. It's a budget-friendly resin 3D printer, and today I'm gonna to be reviewing this machine and letting you know if you should be considering it for your first resin 3D printer. Also, I just realized I forgot to put the Dr. Pepper Zero out of frame. This is not sponsored by Dr. Pepper. However, if Dr. Pepper would like to sponsor a video, <laughs> feel free to let me know. So this is a budget, and I do mean budget-friendly resin 3D printer. I picked this up off of Amazon last week. I found a deal on this for a hundred hundred and eleven dollars I immediately contacted my buddy Andrew Sink who's already produced his review video on this if you haven't already seen that I'll have a link down below or up here in the corner where you can go check that out uh, check it out after you finish watching this one but unfortunately at the time of recording this it has jumped back up in price to a reasonable hundred and thirty dollars over on Amazon still a fantastic price for a, again, a budget-friendly starter resin 3D printer. I'm also happy to say that it actually prints and prints really well. I'm honestly surprised at how well this machine can 3D print things considering its price point. Let's talk about the build volume for this machine. It comes in at 68 by 120 by 155 millimeters. Pretty respectable. It's sort of the standard size that you see on most of these smaller resin 3D printers. No mono screen with this particular unit, which is again, very similar to what you see on the standard resin 3D printers of the size out there in the market, whether it's the Anycubic Photon or the Elgoo Mars. It does have the ball jointed head here for the build plates. Uh, that's gonna screw in and lock in place. I'm being very careful here since I still have a print that I haven't removed off the build plate. We'll be doing that here in just a moment. One thing that is unique to this that I really like is its curved top build plate. It's not an angled build plate like you see on a lot of the other machines. It's just completely curved and I think it works really well with the resin just pooling straight off of it as it's printing to help reduce some of the collection that appears on the top of those build plates. It does also follow the same standard build plate leveling process. You're gonna loosen up the ball joints there and then just go through the process of leveling with a piece of paper. Make sure you tighten it up thoroughly and then you're off and printing. One little unique thing about this printer is its actual vat and the vat design and how it locks into place here. There is little hinges on the side, is the best way I can describe it, that sort of lock it into place with these screw bolts. You don't actually have to fully remove those, which is amazing, and it just slides back in place. There's nothing really else in, in the way of, of, of keeping it secure. I honestly think this is such an impressive and simplistic way to manage the vat and it works extremely well and is nice and secured in place once you slide it right back in there and around the bolts. Unboxing the printer as well was super straightforward and easy, like a lot of other resin 3D printers out there. You can get these up and running in just a matter of minutes and then straight off in 3D printing. I did end up running into a fail with my first 3D print and I think that was a combination of things between the resin settings as well as potentially the build plate not being fully level. So I went through the process of re-leveling that and then reached out to Andrew Sink that I mentioned previously. Uh, I initially started my prints using the default profile in Lychee Slicer and he had mentioned that he was using Cheetu Boxes and so I decided to load it up in Cheetu Box, the free version of Cheetu Box and sliced away and that worked perfect. It also has the standard touchscreen interface on the front of the machine that you see with a lot of other machines. It's very straightforward and easy to use when it comes to moving the build plate, leveling, loading up files, uh, running the screen test, whatever it may be, it's all pretty straightforward. There's no resin included with the printer, so that's something that you'll need to keep in mind if you're planning on picking this up. You'll wanna pick up some additional resin so that you can start printing as soon as you receive the machine. It also does include a plastic and metal scraper. It has a nice blue scraper. I haven't seen one of these before. Everybody runs with the yellow metal scrapers. Uh, it did come with this Flash Forge plastic scraper. I I'm honestly not a big fan of this. I'm really nervous. It's not super clean. <laughs> on the edge here and I'm nervous it's gonna rip up the FEP sheet so I've not really used this at all. Uh, the standard the standard plastic spatulas that typically come with most resin 3D printers are a lot smoother on their edges than whatever this one is here. One other call out that I have about the machine is that inside of the vat, there's a lip around the lower section of it that is really rough. It looks like maybe it's just where it was cut out from a piece of metal. 
and it just isn't smooth and it's very rough. So if you're using a paper towel to clean out the vat, you might end up with torn pieces of paper in there or remnants from the paper towel when you're cleaning out the vat. One other great thing about this printer is that it did come with about three or four of these extra FEP sheets for the vat. So eventually you're gonna wear through the plastic in that vat and you're gonna puncture a hole and need to replace that. It's great that it came with at least three of them here that I can work with in the future. So the first thing I went off and printed were some miniatures from Loot Studios and they just did not print well. As I mentioned previously, I was using a mixture of some Soraya Tech fast resin and I think I had some alcohol inks in it. It was just some leftover resin that I had laying around that I decided to print with. The supports just really did not adhere to the prints and a lot of things broke free. The bases ended up printing okay, but the actual miniatures themselves really did not print well. Once I had those revised settings from Andrew Sink, I went off and printed this cool little robot guy from the Creature Armory here. It's over on his Patreon. This turned out spectacular. I was really excited to see how clean this turned out. Obviously some of the details would look better on a higher resolution resin 3D printer or it would have even printed faster, but it was really excited to see that it was actually printing and it looks really good. I then went off and printed one of the newest models from Loot Studios. This is their new sci-fi lineup. This is one of their bonus files. It is so friggin' cool. I'm really excited to see how nice this turned out. Again, the details on this look great. I could have done a probably better job of sanding down, smoothing out some of the areas here, but a fantastic printer if you're looking to 3D print some of these smaller statues or miniatures. And speaking of those sci-fi miniatures from Loot Studios, I printed off a handful of the other ones at their 32 millimeter scale. Again, uh, I think it might just come down to the resin settings more than anything. Some of the supports ended up failing on these 3D prints, so it just, some of them didn't quite come out right. And you'll see some of the airs just did not print very well. This could just, again, come down to the resin settings or maybe I need to add a little bit more heavier supports in some of those areas for these 3D prints. And the one that I'm most excited to show off to you guys is this miniature Wolverine statue by 3D XM over on their Patreon. This looks so freaking good. It was just, it printed perfectly. I ended up supporting this using my standard Chitu Box support settings that you'll find if you're one of my Patreon members and it turned out amazing. I am so impressed with this little machine and how well it printed this, especially for the price point that I was able to pick it up for under 120 bucks. If you are interested in picking up this resin 3D printer as your first resin 3D printing machine because of the price point, I would say jump right in and try it out. I'm getting some fantastic 3D prints off of this machine with very little upfront work, which is so surprising to see with a machine of this price point. Obviously, if you have a little bit more money and are looking to invest in something like a mono screen resin 3D printer, I would still highly recommend the Elgu Mars 2 or the 2 Pro. That's easily my go-to resin 3D printer, especially when it comes to recommending new machines for people out there. However, this is a really great budget-friendly resin 3D printer. I'll have links down below to the machine. Hopefully there's still some quantities of this on stock over on Amazon by the time this video goes live. If not, uh, keep checking in and we'll see. Let me know in the comments. Also, they have a mono screen version of this printer that I think is only about 150 or 160 bucks. Let let me know if you're interested in me picking that up and reviewing it as well. Also, a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making content here on this channel. If you're interested in more information about my resin 3D printing settings, as well as my support settings that I use for my 3D prints, you'll find that within my Patreon, links down below. Hey, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now.